Shalom Israel, it's Kazawan, and the name of this video is The Full Moon is Not the New Moon. I'm doing this video because it was brought to my attention that some Israelites are teaching that the full moon is the new moon. Now, this is important because our feast days are determined by the moon. So we have to know what the new moon is in order for us to keep our feast days correctly. This is not going to be a long video because it's very easy to prove that the full moon is not the new moon. So let's start at Psalms 81 and 3. It says, Blow up the trumpet in the new moon. In the time appointed on our solemn feast day. Now, when we look at this verse in the English, we don't see the fullness of what it's actually saying. Here you see the verse broken down in English and Hebrew. Notice that the words time appointed is translated from the Hebrew word kasa'a. Now, when we click on this word kasa'a, we see that it's a reference to the full moon. So now we know that the words time appointed in Psalms 81 and 3 is a reference to the full moon. So let's read the verse again. Psalms 81 and 3, it says, Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed, or during the full moon, it says, on our solemn feast day. So now we have the new moon and the full moon in the same verse. Since the word and is not placed in between the words new moon and full moon, many people believe that the new moon in this verse is a reference to the full moon. So they read the verse like this. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the full moon, on our solemn feast day. Again, they believe that the new moon is actually a reference to the full moon. However, we're going to see that that is not the case. I'm going to show you that the words new moon in this verse should be translated new month. And that makes a big difference. But I'll get to that in a second. One thing we know for sure is that this verse is talking about the full moon. We were told to blow a trumpet on this particular full moon. Verse 4, it says, For this was a statute for Israel and a law of the Most High of Jacob. So the Most High gave us a law to do this. Now, when did he tell us to do this? Watch this, verse 5. This he ordained in Joseph for a testimony. Here it is. When he, Israel, went out through the land of Egypt, where I heard a language that I understood not. So this is talking about the Egyptian captivity when the Most High delivered us out of Egypt. Verse 6, it says, I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hands were delivered from the pots. Now, when did the Most High remove the burden from Israel's shoulders? He did that when he took us out of the Egyptian captivity. So when Israel was delivered out of Egypt, the Most High ordained for Israel to blow a trumpet. And we know from verse 3 that it was a full moon. In other words, the Most High delivered Israel out of Egypt during a full moon. He told us to blow a trumpet during this particular full moon to commemorate the day that he brought us out of Egypt. Now, this is how we're going to prove that the full moon is not the new moon. Let's go to Numbers 33 and 1. It says, These are the journeys of the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt with their armies under the hand of Moses and Aaron. So now we're reading about Israel leaving out of the Egyptian captivity. Verse 2, it says, And Moses wrote their goings out according to their journeys by the commandment of Yahweh. And these are their journeys according to their goings out. Now, watch this. Verse 3, it says, And they departed from Ramesses, they left out of Egypt, it says, in the first month. 
Watch this. On the 15th day of the first month, on the morrow after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with an high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. So we see that Israel left out of Egypt in the first month on the 15th day of the month. Now, Psalms 81 and 3 said it was a full moon when they left out of Egypt. Therefore, we know that the 15th day of the month was a full moon. So, how can the full moon be the same thing as a new moon when we know that the new moon is always the first day of the month? Let's prove it. This is 1 Samuel chapter 20 and verse 24. It says, So David hid himself in the field. Watch this. And when the new moon was come, the king sat him down to eat meat, meaning King Saul sat down to eat meat. Verse 25, it says, And the king sat upon his seat as at other times, even upon a seat by the wall. And Jonathan arose and Abner sat by Saul's side, and David's place was empty. Verse 26. Nevertheless, Saul spake not anything that day, for he thought something had befallen him. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. So David didn't show up to eat on New Moon Day. Now watch this. Verse 27. And it came to pass on the morrow. This is the day after New Moon Day. It says which was the second day of the month that David's place was empty. So here we see that the day after new moon day was the second day of the month, which means that new moon day was the first day of the month. New moon day is always day one of a biblical month, but the full moon is the 15th day of the month. Israel left out of Egypt during a full moon on the 15th day. That proves that the full moon and the new moon are not the same thing. It's impossible. Let's go back to Numbers 33 and 3 and read it again. It says, And they, Israel, departed from Ramesses. They left out of Egypt. It says, In the first month. Here it is. On the 15th day of the first month, watch this, on the morrow after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with an high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. So we see that we left Egypt on the 15th day of the month on the morrow after the Passover. We know that the 15th day of the month on the morrow after the Passover is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Let's prove it. This is Leviticus 23 and 5. It says, In the 14th day of the first month, this is the same month we left out of Egypt, the first month, it says, At even, or evening, is Yahweh's Passover. Watch this, verse 6. It says, And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto Yahweh. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. This is important because this shows us that Moses wasn't referring to the 15th day of some Egyptian calendar. He was talking about the same 15th day that we're reading about here in Leviticus. So Israel left out of Egypt on the 15th day of the month during the new moon on the feast of unleavened bread. Let's go back to Psalms 81 and 3. It says, Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. Now, we just proved that the new moon and the full moon is not the same thing. The new moon is day one. The full moon is day 15. So why does Psalms 81 and 3 say, blow up the trumpet in the new moon? Well, as you can see, the words new moon is translated from the Hebrew word Kadash. Let's look it up. When we click on the word Kadash, H2320, we see that it says the new moon. But it also says month, monthly. In other words, 
the Hebrew word Kadash can refer to a new moon as in new moon day, but it can also refer to a new month. Which one is Psalms 81 and 3 talking about? Is it talking about new moon day or a new month? It can't be talking about new moon day because Israel left Egypt in the time appointed, which was the 15th day of the month. Therefore, it has to be talking about the start of a new month. In other words, Numbers 33 and 3 says, we departed out of Egypt in the first month. Remember, new moon in the Hebrew is Kadash, which can also be translated as new month. We came out of Egypt in the first month, which is the newest month in the yearly cycle. That's why the Most High told us to count that month as the beginning of months. So we blew the trumpet in the new month, meaning the first month during the full moon to commemorate our deliverance from Egypt. Let's go to Exodus 12 and 1. It says, And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, watch this, verse 2, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. See that? The newest month. It says, it shall be the first month of the year to you. Again, it was the first month, the newest month of a yearly cycle. So Psalms 81 and 3 says, blow up the trumpet in the new moon. But when you break it down in Hebrew, according to the context, it says, blow up the trumpet in the new month, the first month. In the time appointed during the full moon on our solemn feast day. You see, the English words moon and month are the same Hebrew word kadash. So we have to use the context of the verse to establish which one to use. The words new moon do not fit contextually in Psalms 81 and 3 because the verse is focusing on the full moon, which we proved is the 15th of the month. So the Most High told us to blow a trumpet in the first month during the full moon. And the last part says, on our solemn feast day. Now, what feast day is this talking about? It's talking about the Feast of Unleavened Bread, because that's the day that we left out of Egypt. The first month on the 15th day on the morrow after the Passover. Again, Notice it says on our solemn feast day. See, trumpets wasn't only blown during the first day of the month. Trumpets were blown for many reasons, including our solemn feast days. Let's go to Numbers 10 and 10. It says, Also in the day of your gladness, watch this, and in your solemn days, see that? Solemn days, it says, and in the beginnings of your months, here it is. Ye shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings that they may be to you for a memorial before your God. I am Yahweh, your God. That's why the Most High told us to blow the trumpet in the first month during the full moon, during the Feast of Unleavened Bread on the 15th day of the month. Because trumpets were blown on our solemn feast days also. You see? So there is no way to get around the fact that Moses said Israel left Egypt on the 15th day of the month on the morrow after the Passover. The Most High didn't start to count over from scratch when we left out of Egypt. Because if he did, unleavened bread would be the first day of the month. But we know in the law, unleavened bread is still the 15th day of the month. That's the same day that we left out of Egypt the 15th day of the month, not the first day of the month. So there is no way that the full moon is the same thing as the new moon. It's impossible. Now, let's deal with some of the other verses that people might use. Let's go to Sirach 43 and 7. This is in the Apocrypha. It says, From the moon is the sign of feast, a light that decreaseth in her perfection. 
So people read this verse and they see that it says the moon is a light that decreases in her perfection. So they come to the conclusion that the full moon must be the start of the month. However, that is not what this verse is saying. Let's go up to verse six and read it from there. It says, he made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. So the Most High tells us the purpose of the moon. It declares times as a sign to the world. Verse 7, it says, From the moon is the sign of feast. So the context of verse 7 is feast days. We determine our feast days from the moon. It says, A light that decreaseth in her perfection. Now, this doesn't say anything about the order of the moon cycle. That's not what this verse is talking about. All it tells us is that the moon decreases in light from its fullest point. But verse 7 is dealing with feast days, not the cycle of the moon. Now, the next verse actually does break down the cycle of the moon. Watch. Verse 8, it says, The month is called after her name. Notice that the context of verse 8 is the month. Not the feast days. It says the month is called after her name. So this verse is talking about the cycle of the moon during the month. It says, increasing wonderfully in her changing. Meaning, the moon increases its light as the month progresses. It starts with a sliver, which is day one, and it increases to a full moon, day 15, which is the middle of the month as we read in Psalms 81 and 3. And then it starts to decrease its light to let you know that the month is coming to an end. It says, being an instrument of the armies above, shining in the firmament of heaven. So Sirach 43 and 7 does not prove that the full moon is the beginning of the month because that verse is dealing with feast days. Verse 8 is dealing with the cycle of the moon during a month. You see, these verses have to be rightly divided line upon line to see the different categories of discussion per verse. Now, we know what a full moon looks like without a doubt. The whole moon is lit up. But is there any way that we can figure out what a new moon looks like? Yes. See, Hebrew words have meanings. Don't be afraid to look up words. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Let's look up the words new moon again. So again, this is the Hebrew word Kadash, and it says the new moon month monthly. Now, where does the Hebrew word Kadash come from? Let's go to the root word etymology. So we see that the word Kadash comes from H2318. Let's see what it says. This is H2318. And when you go down to the outline of biblical usage, it says to be new, renew, repair. So this is referring to something that is being renewed or repaired. But watch this. When you go down to the definition given, it says to be new causatively. Here it is. To rebuild, renew, repair. So the root meaning of the word Kadash is to rebuild. Now, you don't rebuild something when it's fully constructed. You rebuild when something was there and it's not there anymore. That is what the new moon is. It's the first stage in the rebuilding towards the full moon. Therefore, the new moon cannot be the same thing as the full moon because the full moon is completely built. The new moon is the first time you see it new again after it goes dark. It becomes brand new again. You get the first sliver of light. The new moon is the beginning process of repairing or rebuilding the full moon. 
It's the first sliver of light that you see. So rather you use the word Kadash to refer to a new moon or a new month. In either case, it's a reference to the starting process. Either the first sliver of light of the moon or the first day of an entire month. Either way. So again, the full moon is not the new moon. That doctrine is off. Now I want to be clear. This video is not about the lunar Sabbath. This video is simply showing that the full moon is not the new moon. So I'm not going to stretch this video out. The point is made. But before I end this video, please be advised. All general comments are accepted. If you disagree with something that I say, you have that right. However, if you attack me on a personal level outside of the scriptures and resort to name calling and childish unspiritual behavior, your comment will be erased and you will be blocked. Also, if you disagree with something that I teach, that's fine. You have the right to comment about it. But if you make a comment in disagreement and you don't use scriptures to support what you're saying, I won't block you, but your comment will be erased because I deal with scriptures, not opinions. Now to the sincere Israelites who watch my videos, I'm not talking to y'all. I appreciate you guys for taking the time out to watch and listen. But I'm talking to these immature, non-spiritual trolls who always have something to say. But when you go to their page, nine times out of ten, they don't have one single video teaching anything. But yet, they want to come on my page and teach in the comment section. I'm not allowing that anymore. So, with that being said, as always, I hope that somebody got some understanding from this video. And with that, I say, Shalom.